said the storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still that hope that lies within the hope is in jesus is reassured as i keep my eyes upon that distant shore i know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared but if the storms don't cease and if the wind keep blowing in my life my soul has been anchored in, in the Lord. Lord God, I thank you today. I just come give you praise, God. God, it's, sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes it gets a little lonely. Sometimes you want to give up. But I know that my soul has been anchored in you, God. And no matter what, no matter how the storm, strong winds blow, no matter how the storms come, God, I know that one day I shall hear you say, well done, that good and faithful servant. Lord, I thank you for the joy that you give me. I thank you for the provision that you make. God, I thank you for being God all by yourself. And I just give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we thank you that our soul has been anchored in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. I'm trying to, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of, y'all got me here again? Okay, I'm going I'm to stay with this because I'm kind of struggling today. I don't want to, I'm not going to be before you long. I'm not going to be before you long. But I'm going to be here as long as God's safe to be here. Amen. As you're turning to your Bibles, if you would, turn to the book of Matthew. The 28th chapter, verses 19 and 20. You know, go ahead. You know, when, when you look at things in life and you think about uh, our VBS, because we, we're still evangelizing. Amen. Thank you, sir. We're still evangelizing. And we're, it's all about Jesus Christ. Because why do you do what you do? Unless you know what the end result shall be. Is it worth it? Would it be worth it? Would it? W w it's like Sister Gloom said a long time ago. What if you don't believe? But what do you have to lose? You only can gain. You can only gain when you do what God has told you to do. And go where God has told you to go. Amen? Do you have the scripture yet? Read with me. Go ye therefore. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let us say a quick prayer while you're sitting down. Father God, I truly thank you. God, I... I really, really thank you. Sometime, God, uh, I know personally that I, I want to just give in from time to time, God, but you said the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. And when you really believe that the best is yet to come, then that it gives you that fire to go again. God, I thank you, Father God, for your glory, for your honor. I thank you for your everything, God. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God again for this opportunity to stand before you quickly as we celebrate and prepare for a journey off the map. Right. Or as I said this morning on the west side, coming out of the box. It's time for us to really come out of the box, Christians, believers. 
those that profess Christ. Man, it's one thing you profess Christ and then don't act like it. Right. We got to quit that. That ain't working. We've seen too much of that. You say you love, but you show hate. All I can say is check yourself because God see you. Amen? Amen? But even with that, I want to thank my pastor for the opportunity to share before you. I want to thank the ministers, the evangelists. Amen. I don't take it lightly in all those months that I was sitting there in that train sometime and going, God, why am I here? As I said to him this morning, the experience that you share in life, if you use it the right way, is to be, make you a better witness about how good God is. Because all those times I wanted maybe to complain, even though I sang a song, I won't complain. <laughs> Every time I wanted to complain about that, God had to remind me that when I was a little boy, two or three years old, Tristan's age maybe, I loved trains. And I should say that one day I'm going to do that. One day I'm going to do that. God, one day I'm going to do that. Guess what? I'm doing that. So why am I complaining about something I prayed to God for? Oh, why am I crying about being off on, being, being at work on weekends where that's what I asked God for a long time ago? A little bitty boy. How dare us do that to God? How dare me? To ask God for something, he give it to me, then I want to whine about it. And then stand before you and say, I won't complain. Hmm. Something ain't going together there, right? But again, I also want to thank my wife. Y'all, I have the bestest as a wife. I have... The bestest, right. the bestest wife in the world. She is the bestest right. because she's with me. And any woman that said they would be with me for 30 plus years, I, she had to be psychotic when she said it. But thank, <laughs> but thank God she's psychotic and she's still there. I love her dearly. I thank the God for the things she do. I see you upstairs there. Appreciate you, sweetie. Love you dearly. Amen. 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 As we get into the word this morning from the uh, book of Matthew, and I said to them this morning on the west side, I was talking about last year, we came with the theme of Agency D3. And, and it was the three words is discover, decide, and to defend. We was discovering Christ. We was deciding to follow Christ. And then defending what you believe. And now God says it's time to take the journey. He says, it's time to go. Matter of fact, we passed time to go. Ready, set, go, been there a long time ago. Y'all see what the world is doing, right? Mm -hmm. We're taking lives as if it means nothing. And it's not about black and white. It's lives, period. We're killing children. We've taken prayer out of school. We're not giving God what God deserves. Even though he said in, the, in I believe, the Second Chronicles, he said, if my people who are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. Turn from their wicked ways. Purpose to seek my face. But we want to seek everything else. Just like he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So it's kind of hard for us to go where we're going to. Are we going to the bottle? Are we going to drugs? Are we going to that significant other? Are we going to the law? The world is doing its job, y'all. I ain't giving the great devil credit, but they're doing their job. They, they, they continue on. We worry about a flag. What does a flag mean if you don't change the heart? Right. It means absolutely nothing. Right. It's just a symbol. It's the heart that matters. It is a heart matter, y'all. We better get, we better quit twisting this thing up. Then we can take faces off the side of a mountain. Ooh, that really did it. God, they all gonna serve you now because, because they'll put something else up there. I mean, just think back. I think Pastor this morning when, when he said Moses, when God told Moses to go, and after Moses, then they led the people out of the children of Israel out. What did they do? No, oh, we had it better than Egypt. Why you bring us down here, Moses? You supposed to be one of us. I tell you what, let's go build us a calf. Let's worship that calf. That's what we need. That's give us what we need to go. What idol are you placing in your life? If all you place in God. Are y'all hearing me, church? This is not a scarring message. This is a message that says, look, we got a commandment. 
we are to go, each and every one of us. Amen. Go ye therefore and teach. What are we teaching? Look at your neighbor and ask them, what are you teaching? How many teachers do I have in here? I ain't gonna put you on the spot. How many teachers do I have in here? Come on, come on, come on. Okay, now I saw a handful. Y'all assuming I'm talking school, right? How many teachers do I have in here? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Are you a believer? Then you're a teacher. You understand? But see, we won't have somebody else to do it. Well, you do it. You the pastor, you go teach. If Pastor Conway passes away, who's next? Where do you fit in this in the equation at? Where do I fit in at? You know, God, our DNA is unique to each and every one of us. Amen? Nobody can be who and they probably don't want to be who Greg Reconine is. Amen? But that's okay because I'm cool with that because I love some me. I really do because Jesus that lives in me loves me. So because Jesus loves me, I love me. Amen? Do you love yourself? Then are you willing to go and do what God told you to do? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. What we are supposed to teach is the scripture. If you look at 2 Timothy 3.15, I believe it is, 3.15 or 16, I think 15 talks about since you was a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures. But 16 says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Amen. And depending on what translation you're looking at, it says useful for teaching, for correcting faults, for teaching others how to live their lives. Are you teaching the right thing, family of God? In your going. And, and, and there again, where are you going to? See, back in the day, I thought I can just go into the clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah brother, I, I'm going to teach you how to live. But that's okay, though. Because you know what? As I started to understand, and I read this and I kept going, I said, God, what are you trying to say here? Our past experiences are not so much designed the way we look back and think of how bad we were. But it shows how, God, how far God has brought us. So that you become a better witness to somebody else that may be going through what you went through. Because some people may be stuck on alcohol, pornography, gossip, cheating, whatever. Whatever your vice is. We all got a vice. And that vice is sin. Amen. And if we say well, without sin, we are liars. That's the word of God. That ain't Greg saying that. That's the word of God. If we say we're without sin, now I don't give you a right to go out there and just get crazy and go, go, go sporadic and just, I'm just go whatever. It's saying that we're supposed to be those things that have that mind of Christ. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatever substance, uh, things of a, of a virtue, good virtue. Wow. If you think of those things, what does the sin have to do? Because I, I, I'm going to tell you, it's kind of hard to be staying in a sinful place and sinful mind when Christ enters in. Because when good comes in, bad got to go. Yeah. If you don't believe me, turn the light off and turn it back on. When the light comes on, the darkness goes. Amen. Jesus is the light Amen. of the world. Amen. Do we understand that? Like I told you, I'm not going to stay long, but I'm just going to give you some pointers because the excitement is the thing of VBS, Vacation Bible School. We think the Vacation Bible School is all for the little people. I didn't see in the scriptures where it's go ye little people, you little babies. We are babes in Christ. So I think what we think is, well, I'm a baby in Christ, so I can't go. No, you don't go there. It's saying go ye therefore. And uh, don't y'all get mad at me. I talked about this morning. I'm really more willing to go in and, and, and talk to a drug dealer than I'm a super saint. Y'all know what a super saint is, right? Do y'all really know what a super saint is? Like I told them this morning, they were there when Moses was there getting the tablet from God. They were right there going, mm -hmm. God, you need to change that right there. That's a super saint. You can't tell them nothing. Yeah. Nothing. They have already prayed more you can ever pray. They've already praised more you can ever praise. They can always, they've, they've already delivered more you can ever think about delivering. And you won't find not one speck of mess in their life. Well, that's not for me to call you out, and I'm not going to even try to sound like I'm judging you. It's saying, but 
take that to God and see what he says about it. See, when you go on your dress, those people, but you know what? We got to go talk to that stupid saint too. Because he didn't give us no, no, no gray area there. That's why he told you go into the jail cells, into the highways and the byways, into the hedges, in those places that make you feel totally uncomfortable. Because in your distress, in your weakness, God's strength is made perfect. We get it twisted. We think that I can do this. Well, I share with them this morning again about weightlifting, for instance. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's times I'm in the gym, I think, oh, I can't do that. Then I get down there and I say, I can. Yeah, I can. Not I think I can, but yes, I can. Because God said I can. But in that, God also gives you wisdom and understanding of those things that you can do. And don't also, don't, don't, don't think that you ain't already been prepared for it. God's been prepared, each and every one of us, since the day we were saved. Actually born. Actually born. I know the plans I have for you. Yeah. Oh, my God. We get it twisted somewhere in there and say, well, God, can I put that on hold for a little bit? He allowed me to, I had to say. I'm going to be honest with you now. I don't even lie to you. He allowed me to. I didn't see myself as a preacher. Even though I laughed and I told him, I said, I was that little kid out there in the backyard on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Let alone one of these days I'm going to move on down the street and I, I'm going to. Mm -hmm, wave my hand and whatever God would tell me. Mm -hmm, Lord. Yeah. Wow. Now I'm preaching. How did I get there, God? Because he knew that from a child what he had placed in me. And one day I might be hooping like I just hooped. I don't know. It's all right, though. Because it's all in the same. Because what God put in me a long time ago, he said, it's time for it to come out. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You know what? Think about it. As a singer, there's two ways that a lot of singers sing. If y'all may, this will show you what I'm talking about. You can sing from the diaphragm. That's getting deep down. Or you can sing from the throat. God wants you to reach deep down in the depths of who you are and realize what he has brought you from and where he has taken you to. Because when you understand that your soul has been anchored in the Lord, whoo, think about what the song said a while ago. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from the day. that lies within is reassured. And that assurance is Jesus. No matter what, that's why I continue to want to go. Go in the name of the Father. Go in the name of the Son. Go in the name of the Holy Ghost. And when he's talking about baptizing them in the name of the Father, I said, God, what do you mean by baptizing? Teach them the word. Teach them. Teach them the word. Of course, we, do, we know we baptize. But teach them the word of God. Some people really don't know. They really don't know. But catch this out. He says, if you know right and do wrong, you will be beaten with many stripes. Some of us know right and we're choosing to do wrong. It's not so much... Is it, I, I think, I said, God, I said, what is it? It's that what we're not doing. Are we showing the real love that God has told us to go with? Are we actually taking Jesus with us when we're going into these visits? When we, somebody said this morning, when people see us, when they see your face, how do they see you? Do they see you as a smiling believer that goes through and you keep on saying, but I know who's going to bring me through? Or do they see you that person that's, oh, woe is me. What was that cat name? Slip Rock. Woe is me. Oh, I just can't make it. Oh. Eeyore, Eeyore. Or oh, do they see you as that person that says, God, no matter what comes at me, 
after I've done all what I can, I'm going to stand. Stand with that breastplate of righteousness. That feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. Am I right? The sword of the spirit. Do you have your whole armor on? Because this journey is going to require you to be armored up. And again, don't get it twisted. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So it ain't the people. It's just the wickedness of the devil, I guess you could say. Then we say, well, I don't deal with people like that. or I don't understand God. Well, then that may, I have been asked this question. So then why did a loving God allow these things to happen? Why would a loving God allow a young lady to go to Texas and lose a life in a few days? Why would a loving God allow people to break into a, come into a church, go through a Bible study, and then kill folk? God still loves you. But God says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. There is sin in the land. And sometimes it has to rain on the just as well as the unjust. Are you feeling me? We don't need to get it twisted no more, y'all. God has given us all the tools required to go where he wants us to go. We just got to get ourselves ready. Oh, excuse me, let me change that. You're already ready. You're already ready. I shared again this morning on the West, on the, on the West Campus. I said, you know, when your friend here went to Saudi Arabia back in 1990, I was going to work a midnight shift. I ended up in Saudi Arabia for seven and a half months. They didn't say, hmm, Sergeant Goodan, you want to go? Sergeant Goodan, are you able to go? Tell Sergeant Goodan, we need you to go. Get your bag. God said to some of you today, get your bag. Yeah. It's time for you to go. Go where he wants you to go. We can't be like Jonah no more. I know, I know, God, they don't deserve it. Did you look at yourself? You got to check yourself before you can talk about someone else. And I'm talking to me on that one because I know better. But in this journey, you also don't find out that there's many legs to this journey. In, in the preparation for me to even to go to Saudi Arabia, there was tw two times they sent me to Indian Springs, Nevada. Indian Springs, Nevada is a training place. Ooh, wow. A training ground. Y'all get it? Training ground. Prepare me for what I had to go for. Go through. For seven days, we out there living on the elements, basically. Well, three of the days anyway. The last day before you to go home, they give you a compass, and they give you the little grid coordinates of where you got to go to. Somebody here know what I'm talking about. Amen? And all of you to be picked up to go home. Now, when you walk, you're walking in the desert, you starting off at midnight. Your bus is supposed to be there at 5, 6 o'clock sometime in the morning. So what you had to do is go from leg to leg and pray that you were going right. We got lost sometime, but we never lost sight of the final destination. As believers, sometimes you may get lost. Sometimes you may lose your way. It may get a little cloudy and fuzzy. And most time, don't, 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 don't go with flip. Don't say the devil did it. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Say you did it. I did it. The devil would probably leave you alone. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> he can never leave you alone. But when you realize that what you do, it allows you to grow in Christ. Because of something that the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, first, one, excuse me, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So as I bring this down to a close, if you look at the journey on the map, the little bracelet that a lot of us have been wearing, it says, admit Believe and confess. What are you admitting to? Don't, don't answer me. This, this said to God. What are you admitting to? 
And then take it to what you're committing yourself to. Are you admitting that God is the head of your life? And are you committed to showing that? That's a question for you to ask yourself. And if you're admitting that you are Christ and that God has chosen you out of darkness, because let me, let me, let me throw this in here. It's always quick to want to use the, the scripture at Romans 8, 28. For I know things work out for me. For what the devil meant for bad, God turned for good. For all things work together for the good. Let them love the Lord. Those called. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. We want to use that one. <laughs> but when he tells you, <laughs> bring a tithe to the storehouse that may be meat in my house. Oh, well, God, you didn't tell me to do that. It's the same thing. We need to admit and commit to the whole word of God and what he has told us to do. And when you admit and commit to it, you understand that he's already prepared you to go do what he had told you to do. So now you got to get into that belief factor. Believe in what? Believe that Jesus is real. Believe that he cares about you. Believe that he says, in my house, there are many mansions. Many mansions. Believe that he says, if you knock, he shall open the door. If you seek, you shall find. Amen? Amen. There's things that God is doing for us right now in this body of Christ. And there's a lot further that we can go. Go. By the way, put down those two words. G-O, go. God only. God only. When you look at the word go, think God only. So it's time somebody say Go. God only. Meaning you're going to be doing what? Going with God. You got me? And lastly, confess. Confess. This is the hard part for Gregory. Greg had to confess that, God, I got some mess in me. You want me to go where and do what? Me? With this mess? He said, yeah. What makes you different than Noah? What makes you different than Moses? What makes you different than Abraham? What makes you different than Job? Naomi. Rahab. Rahab was who? And what did she do? But we get twisted sometimes because we think about the sinfulness that is in our life. It don't mean you live with it. It means you give to God. And understand that you are a sinner saved by grace. And that God has a mandate for each and every one of us in here. According to your DNA, nobody else is going to do what you are called to do. It's you. You know, and I, I, I'm a, this is a sidebar here, pastors. I probably close this out. We use, I use a lot of voices when I'm talking. I really do. But there's one voice you must always hear. That's the voice of Jesus. Because just I use all those voices sometimes because I think that's how we are in the world. We hear so many voices that we don't really hear the one that counts the most. And the only way you can know the one that counts the most is by how. The Bible says to study and show thyself approved. A workman needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So as you are going, he says to be instant in season and out of season. And the thing that really gets me, he said, what we see right now, when we talk about they don't see what we see, well, guess what? God said that would come a time where they would gather themselves a great number of teachers that would say what their itching ears want to hear. They would turn aside from teaching, okay? Like I said, you got so many translations that you fill your head up with what's going on. But understand, in today's society, there's many false prophets out there talking to you. The one that need to, we need all to listen to is the one that says go. The devil would never tell you to go and pray for somebody else. The devil's never going to tell you to go and look out for your brother and sister that is in a time of need. He's, he's going to tell you to walk on by. Somebody else will do it. 
It's your job to do what God has told you to do. As you seek God and as you trust and believe in him, as you admit, believe, and confess, I encourage you to go with God. Take this journey as a body of believers. There is strength in numbers. As, they, as we say, you know, that it takes a whole village to raise a child. Imagine what all we can do, family of God, if we just come together right now and do what God has told us to do. Amen. As the musicians come, understand that God has a plan for us. Go ye therefore.